Hey, this is Dan Bergman. I want to share with you something that a lot of people are confused about, and that is what does Jesus mean when he says lukewarm? Well, in Revelation chapter number 3, in verse number 14, Jesus says, And unto the angel, or pastor, of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. This is important. There's context here. I would that thou wert cold or hot. Jesus says, I would rather have you be cold than lukewarm. What does that mean? Does that make sense? It does when you understand the context. Let's keep reading. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and have increased with goods, and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold, tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. That's also important. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. The first thing we need to understand is that Jesus is not writing to an individual Christian. He's not writing to an individual believer, but rather to an entire church. This church as a whole, this local group of believers, was lukewarm collectively. Now, we need to understand some things about Laodicea. Just like in many other instances in the Bible, the historical and cultural and geographical context makes a very important impact on how we interpret this passage. To the north of Laodicea was a city called Hierapolis, which had hot springs. These hot springs were very useful in cooking and in cleaning. But then there was another city to the south of Laodicea that had cold springs. And these cold springs were clean and refreshing to drink from. The problem is, Laodicea constantly had problems with its water supply there was an aqueduct that took the water six miles from the south, from Colossae, up to Laodicea. And by the time this cold water went through this aqueduct to reach Laodicea, it had become lukewarm. And oftentimes because of it, it was unclean, undrinkable, unsanitary, and not enjoyable at all to ingest. It's the kind of thing you want to just spit out of your mouth. Jesus says, that the church at Laodicea was just like the water supply at Laodicea. And so he says, I wish that you were rather cold or hot, refreshing and enjoyable and useful and clean, or hot and enjoyable and useful and clean. Both of these are good. Lukewarm is not. And so Jesus says, because you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Now, there's a very important thing that that does not mean. It does not mean that you're going to lose your salvation. It does not mean that Jesus says, because you are a carnal Christian, or you're struggling with sin, or you're involved in different things that you should not be involved in, that you're all of a sudden going to lose your salvation. That is not what he is saying. That thought would go against much of what Jesus taught in the Gospels about how it's impossible for anyone, even us, to pluck ourselves out of his hand. And that nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You can never lose your salvation. If you could lose it, it would not be eternal life. It's as simple as that. So what does Jesus mean when he says, I will spew you out of my mouth? Remember, he's talking to a church, not an individual believer. And the thing about the lukewarm water that reached Laodicea is that it was un 
usable. Jesus says, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. I'm not going to use you. I'm not going to bless you. And unless you repent, there will be great chastisement in your life. Does God chastise those that aren't his children? No. The book of Hebrews tells us that if you be without chastisement, you're bastards, illegitimate, and not actual sons. He also says, as many as the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and chastises every son that he receives. And so these believers in Laodicea were carnal, were fleshly, were lukewarm. And Jesus says, I'm going to bring great chastisement in your life if you don't repent. And that can eventually, in the life of a believer, can lead to the Lord taking us home if we don't repent of the sin that we're involved with. He will never remove the Holy Spirit from us, but he will bring great chastisement and discipline in the life of a believer that's messing around with sin. You're going to miss out on God's blessing. You're going to miss out on God's fellowship. You're going to miss out on answered prayer. And you're going to miss out, as in the context here, in being used by the Lord. He's going to spit you out of his mouth. He's not going to want to use you if you're not living for him and keeping your life clean and holy and pure. If you are involved with sin in your life, if you are convicted in your heart that, yes, I'm living a life that's lukewarm, I would encourage you to do the same thing that Jesus tells the church at Laodicea to do, and that's to repent. Recognize your sinfulness and turn from it. Confess it to God. And the Bible says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. According to the Bible, the only time that the word lukewarm is ever used, it's in reference to a church. And the context is stating that Jesus is not going to use that church and he's going to bring judgment and chastisement upon them because he loves them, because they are his children, and yet they are going to be chastised for their sin that they allowed into their life. And it becomes self-reliant not relying on Jesus, and he wants to bring them back to a full reliance on him. Don't be confused by those out there that try and twist scripture to mean what they want it to mean without looking at the context and without looking at the other things that Jesus said throughout scripture. If we let the Bible interpret itself, we'll come to the right conclusions.